Let's talk chicken critical butt. role. Oh. Chicken butt too, but let's talk critical role. Yee. And by that I mean let's talk Legend of Vox Machina, mm-hmm. uh, episodes seven through nine. So this is Miracle's show. Miracle mm-hmm. suggested the show. She's a fan. Yes. She's a much bigger fan than I was initially. I enjoyed these episodes mm-hmm. more than I enjoyed six. Uh, I'm sorry, more than I enjoyed four through six. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to let Miracle give me her first thoughts on this. I really like it because it shows more about the Brighter Woods and how I'm. I'm. I believe his name is Ulysses. Is it Ulysses? Yes, I believe so. Okay, so Ulysses is Mr. Briarwood, Lord Briarwood, and you find out why he's a vampire. He was dying from a lung disease that basically was killing him, and his wife Delilah couldn't accept the fact that he was dying because nobody could cure him. Which humanizes them. Yeah, it humanizes them. Was that in episode eight? Let's get, um, let's get seven yeah, is it's uh, like eight ish nine ish no but but seven is the one where we find out <coughs> about uh professor anders right yeah uh, and how he <coughs> raised or not raised but he was taught the, the he kids was the one who taught uh percy mm-hmm. and his sister cassandra yeah right uh and then you see his kind of um turn to mm-hmm. evil uh because he feels underappreciated right is that yeah okay uh because like basically he asked her by um not the buyer words the the Rolos. Every time the Rolos. Every time when we hear that name, Brett and I want that candy. But I also think mm-hmm. of Jason Derulo. It's Jason Derulo, and it's yeah, just like it's just Percy. Percy it said Derulo. Yeah, but um, basically, Anders um, he asks <laughs> he asks the Lord Derulos. Luca Heights. <laughs> Keep going. He asks the Dorolos, like, um, can I get more funding for this project? I think it would be really great and beneficial for the family and, like, society as a whole. And what was the project? I forgot. I think it was, like, something to do with, like, energy. Did it have to do with the silver tongue? No. Or was that, okay, that was separate? Okay. No, the silver tongue, um, the Briarwoods gave it to him. So, like, anything he wants, he can get it himself yep. and that's what led to him creating the the uh in the battle with the um suits of armor that yeah. came to life that was the cool that yeah. was the part i liked um but yeah so basically the dorellos said no we are not paying money for this so they brushed yep. him off and that's where it made him more angry because he felt like nobody appreciated him or like wanted to hear him out yeah so when the buyer woods came along and said we can give you more he decided yeah i can portray he not, turned evil yeah he he was like yeah i can like throw this whole life away and get a better life that may not look right i enjoyed that guy's portrait mm-hmm. that portrayal of that character of mm-hmm. professor anders like i i don't identify with it but i yeah. enjoyed how good he was at being bad yeah. at being evil um i think scanlan had more moments in this than i usually get mm-hmm. from him i have a hard time i like, i think i mentioned here before like i i i have a much easier time mm-hmm. um relating not relating to but um cheering for the female characters in the show for some yeah. reason i love keyleth mm-hmm. i love uh uh, um, Pike, Pike, uh, mm-hmm. probably more than all of them, but uh, yeah. no, but also uh, Vax. Is, she, is it Vex or is Vax the girl? I think uh, Vax is the girl, and then Vex is the boy. One of the two. Yeah. Um, so uh, yeah, I have that. Uh, where did I put? I, I had that one written down here. Uh, oh yeah. So Pike talks. Uh, yeah. So uh, did you enjoy the part about Pike in the Everlight? Um, uh, I could do without that it. That felt very tacked on. Like mm-hmm. the whole storyline of her needing to go away was connected to the fact that Ashley Johnson had to bow out of that mm-hmm. uh, that portion of the campaign mm-hmm. during cri- when they were filming Critical Role. What was she doing? Like I know I, she was I'm doing sure it was different work. Okay, it probably had something to do with work. But uh, s- so this story feels a little bit tacked on, and it, mm-hmm. it feels narratively like it doesn't fit with the rest of it, where everyone is very cohesive and together. Mm-hmm. Other than, even when Scanlan goes out on his own, they're kind mm-hmm. of all brought back together pretty quickly, uh, and this leads to eventually. We, we do meet Cassandra yeah. in the current year. And she uh, almost died. She almost dies. Yeah. Ke- and Keyleth has to bring her back to life. Mm-hmm. I like that a lot. Yeah. Uh, there is so much heart behind Keyleth's character that mm-hmm. uh, I just, I adore seeing And then uh, Vox saying, I'm in love with you. And she's like, really? Not the right time. Vax. Yes. Vax. Vax, my bad. Uh, Vax says that to Keyleth. And she's mm-hmm. like, really? Now? Yeah. Uh, uh, and then we like also. In the middle kn- of the battle. Yeah. And then we also learn about how. I love it how they don't call it a gun. They call it a pepper box. Yep. We learn how 
Percy made the pepper box. Yes, and the the mm-hmm. origins behind like where the names come from yeah. and the mask. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's it called again? A plague doctor's mask. Yeah, you always call it. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I didn't know that. Uh, I thought you knew this. Is it was what during the Black Plague, like I, they wore it. I had heard. I, I mean, I heard the term before, but I wouldn't mm-hmm. have been able to have pointed it out. Same with like. Uh, I mean, when I think mm-hmm. of that, when I think of that term, I think of like a Guy Fox mask, <laughs> like from V for Vendetta. Yeah. Um. What was the uh. This is one of the few times where I felt Scanlan's humor worked really well. Yeah. Like his line about, um, if there's one thing I learned from brothels, it's that size doesn't matter. It's how you use it. Mm-hmm. That made me laugh. And then him riding away on a middle finger actually made me laugh. Yeah. But I do think that this show suffers from a little bit of like, it doesn't always know what it wants to be. Yes. Does it want to be charming and heartfelt? <clears throat> Does it want to be um, crude and violent? Yeah. Now, done perfectly well, you can mix those two and in 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 they, in they flow seamlessly. To me, now mm-hmm. this is just my personal interpretation. The uh, the the violence and then the crude humor, like when Pike comes back and she's like, "Let's kill the," where she says her crude lines, yeah. always feels a bit tacked on. Like the writer giggled to themselves as they yeah. wrote that line. Does that make sense? Yeah, I can see that. Like I would not imagine. Um, like Pike talking like that after the way she talks to uh, the the Everlight, right? Mm-hmm. Which, by the way, portrayed by Tace, uh, Tracy Toms from yeah. Cold Case fame. I love that show. Yeah, well, also, like, I didn't... The part where she's like, you can choose one of these two paths. You can choose the holy one or you can choose the one where you're longer friends, but you will always carry that holy spirit around it felt like they gave up writing this year like there Mm -hmm. should have been more internal conflict and they like there should have been a more defined reason as to why she went back this direction Mm -hmm. but that whole storyline about her and worthiness and the everlight and holiness all of that kind of felt muddled and like it didn't Mm -hmm. make is that just me it felt like it it felt really confusing it felt really confusing i think if they just wrote without it it should be fine they could have just skipped that storyline entirely. Mm-hmm. Let uh, like leave Pike out of it for like a couple of episodes. Mm-hmm. Maybe do one, uh, one or two check ins. But I, I felt like they didn't need to do mm-hmm. this. Um, the, it just didn't. Though it did, I, I will say that it did lead to one of the better parts of it, which is when she makes her big comeback mm-hmm. uh, as a as a what astral projection which of course then they had to make a joke in her about. what ass uh, uh, yeah grog grog continuing to see when, when he does the crude mm-hmm. humor. It makes sense. It makes sense, but because then Scallion. He, because he feels, it feels like it fits that character. Yeah. But when Pike, whose little tiny Pike is crude, yeah. it doesn't come off as like, uh, uh, as like part of her character. It feels like a writer wrote it. Mm-hmm. Also, I realized why you wouldn't identify like the Plague Doctor mask because it's very steampunk or like emo-esque or um, I was goth-esque. Never, I was never emo and I was never goth. Yeah, and it's also like... Even um, though I wear all black a lot. <laughs> And then early Tumblr, um, Tumblr days where... Uh, God help us. The grunge. God help Tumblr. It, it, yeah. Tumblr is... Uh, just get the hell away from Tumblr. And I only know it because like the Black Plague and also um, Squishables, the company that makes dolls. What? Yeah, it's called Squishables. The the company that makes these like big fluffy dolls. One of the, their best sellers. I really want one, but they're kind of on the pricey end. They're called the Plague Doctor plushie and then the plague nurse and it's if you buy two you get like a discount but it still costs a lot but the plague doctor one there's one that i really want it's like bigger than me and it can sit alone in the corner of your room and it's so cute because he holds like a little little lantern but basically why creepy yeah but basically why the plague doctor looks like a bird's beak because like back then they wanted to keep away bad smells Oh, okay. That, that actually makes mm-hmm. perfect sense. Now, I, I, I kind of impressed this upon you mm-hmm. earlier. I've, I've been trying to figure out why this show hasn't resonated with me mm-hmm. the way it has with you. Yeah. Whether it's because it's animation, which I there's I, I love yeah. DC animated mm-hmm. movies. It's not... I don't think that's the problem. I don't think it's the fact that it's based off of something from Dungeons & Dragons. Mm-hmm. I'm not particularly attached to D&D. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, but also, this dialogue isn't hard to follow, so that's not the problem. Yeah. I think what it is is that the main character character the character with the most uh progress and development as both a character and as a human being Mm -hmm. uh story-wise narratively is percy and i just 
have a really hard time mm-hmm. uh, getting into his character and identifying with Percy. I just yeah. don't, I don't feel any connection to him. I understand how much of this has to do with him being kind of, uh, he's the chosen one per se, mm-hmm. and he's going back to claim his birthright, and he was run out of town at an early age by the evil Briarwoods, and all of this stuff should make me care about him. His mm-hmm. sister nearly, you know, having to leave his sister's side should make me care about him, but for some reason, whether it's because of the writing or the portrayal, it mm-hmm. just doesn't resonate with me the way it does with you. Like, you yeah. really like this character a lot. I do, because it kind of shows, like, this character, like, how complex he is and how he turned this way. I wish they kind of explained more why he... Like, they did explain how he built the pepper box, but they didn't explain why, like, all of a sudden he turns more violent. And there's more episodes. And, come, like, so how he put on yeah, the mask so quickly. Yeah, I, I don't understand the part where why he gets so violent so quickly, yeah. where it feels like it's, like, maybe I'm missing something. Like, I, I no. fully ad- admit that I could mm-hmm. be missing something here. Like, maybe there's magic involved that I'm supposed mm-hmm. to be catching uh, some type of um, subtle hint mm-hmm. that I'm not seeing. Maybe that's why I'm. It's not resonating mm-hmm. with me. Um, I will say that the Briarwoods were given a lot more uh, sympathy. There's a much more sympathetic angle to the Briarwoods mm-hmm. uh, per these three episodes. Yeah, with finding out how he became mm-hmm. or how they are they both vampires or is only he a vampire? He's only a vampire, and she's like a witch because like she's, she's a, yeah, because she performed the spell yeah. that was able to turn him into a vampire. Which she is why you opened can't see. the book of the Dam. Yes, mm-hmm. uh, which is why you can't see his reflection in the mirror. Yeah, so there like there's a lot more uh, layers to those characters. Like mm-hmm. I would be more interested in a tragic Briarwood story mm-hmm. or a Pike and Grog buddy comedy story than the per- and maybe those come in season yeah. two. Well, the they Briarwood the Briarwood probably won't, but yeah. but there might be more of Pike in in season two. Mm-hmm. I imagine uh, like that the Vex and Vax will get more screen time along with yeah. Keyleth in the last three episodes. I want more story time with Keyleth because like it was kind of weird because the first few episodes she like had an inkling of a feeling for Percy but then it went to Vax right? Yes. Vax is the guy. Yeah. Maybe and it's it, still coming. Maybe they'll maybe then Vax and uh and um and Percy will battle for her affections. Well, I legit thought Vax was going to be a gay character because the uh, um uh, the storekeeper and him were like flirting I think, hard. I think he's bisexual. Oh, I, I think that's what they're saying. <clears throat> Just like Peacemaker now. If, yeah, so, but because of course. Yeah, but I wish be. like they drew him a little bit better. If he was like bisexual, I want to see somebody that's both appealing to male and yeah. female. But whatever. Plain art looks okay. Uh, the character designs are very, very like I had a hard mm-hmm. time telling uh, the Vax and and, Vox. and, and uh, no, I like uh, Vax is the girl. Yeah. Uh, I I had a hard time. No, Vex is the girl. Yeah. Uh, I had a hard time telling Vex and um, uh, Keyleth apart at first. Yeah. Uh, for the first few episodes, so uh, I I, th- I think you're right about that. Like mm-hmm. maybe I like. Uh, um, Pike because and Grog because mm-hmm. they're the most distinct. Yeah, it's th- really unique. Maybe I'm just dumb, and it's just because I like the way that, like uh, Ashley Johnson's vocal portrayal of Pike, and uh, and all, that might be uh, also like when you think about it, Pike and Grog have the most vocally different portrayals, mm-hmm. with Grog being very deep and very uh, mm-hmm. big buffoonish, but but sweet and lovable, right? Yeah. And then Pike is so uh, adorable and um, and kind sounding, mm-hmm. uh, if not a little bit naive, even, yep. if na- even if that's not true. So maybe it's that extreme portrayal of those characters that made me uh, fall, you know, or, c- you know, come to their, uh, you know, become more enamored with them quicker. Mm-hmm. So we will see. We, I mean, that's, uh, we're up, we got three more episodes to go. Yep. Uh, it goes, it goes, it's going to go through episode 12. Yay. So we will see, uh, we will see what comes up with that. Mm-hmm. Uh, what are you looking forward to the most? Like, how do you think the storyline, uh, concludes? Right now, I feel like it's dragging on a little bit long. But do you think it ends with Percy taking out the Briarwood? Yeah, I think it's going to end like that because like for me, like how I was complaining about the first three episodes where they didn't talk about the dragon storyline that quickly mm. because like they only talked about it. Like, yeah, that two feels episodes. like a lifetime ago. Yeah, it was like only two episodes and then they skipped over to like Percy's storyline, which is taking up a lot of the a season. A lot of the time. Like, yeah. So basically from four through nine. Yeah. Um, so four is when they start on that mm-hmm. journey to White, uh, yeah, to Whitehall. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so... 
white uh white, white stone uh, white stone it's a white hall yeah white hall is a uh yeah not it's a different reference <laughs> also earlier yeah. uh, this is completely an aside remember yeah. when i was mentioning the show wallander and i thought he was mm-hmm. scottish it's yeah swedish swedish <laughs> oh see you can sometimes you can tell from the accents yes and uh, i learned swedish um i was listening to like 70 no not 70 27 different languages to sing this one song that's popular for Encanto it's called Surface Pressure and it's sang by the character Luisa and like there's a Swedish part it kind of sounds Spanish to me what part um because like they cut it in different segments but it's a part where like she's basically um talking about how much pressure is on her shoulders and she's about to like pop and snap okay and like that part i thought they were singing in spanish again and i was like this is not in spanish and it was like swedish oh yeah it sounds adorable yeah it's cute because like right now disney's trying to like um produce like more songs in different languages like i barely learned like two days ago that um disney has an e- israeli part of it mm-hmm. and there there was like hebrew songs and i'm like when did this happen and their song um like their singer i mean it's like a black girl she speaks hebrew and i'm like cool where is this from i didn't know they were trying to like do that the beauty of being a a worldwide corporation Mm -hmm. but yeah right now they're trying to like um get like songs all over the place like my favorite version of a there's money to be made in all parts of the world yep my favorite song by disney is the japanese version of into the unknown oh what's that from that's from frozen 2 okay i've never seen frozen 2. yeah i only like it because i was in japan and they were playing that song non-stop oh. in shibuya and like um if you go to like shibuya's mall because i was looking for a certain pokemon doll it was com- um because i wanted to support this graffiti artist i really love his art i still can't find that doll because it's always sold out and if you want you can send it over and i can finally display it somewhere but this doll wow that was a Cra- that was a very very manipulative way of getting something you want yeah that's true because i've been looking for it for like so long oh, it's like man. really cool it's um by a graffiti artist and i wanted to like what's the name of the graffiti artist i think his name is gen zero okay yeah gen zero and like um he's a street artist of japan and like pokemon um this has nothing to do with critical role no nope. legend of ox Machina, nope, it's just it me talking about slip, um, stuff she wants she wants people to give her stuff <laughs> so she's gonna no use supporting this. the artist supporting the artist but yeah like he did a lot of artwork for skateboards oh. so like you can buy skateboards of like his graffiti art of like all different pokemons but there's a pikachu that's like all black but it has all his art on it and i really wanted that because i thought it was cool but i ended up getting a graffiti pikachu so he's like holding a spray can you settled for graffiti pikachu well because that's the only one they had i asked like the manager like one is like the because they had a big graffiti pikachu yeah and i was like when is that coming out and she said oh you have to wait until february we're out okay and i was like no maybe next time yeah but they played that song way too much it happens well, into the unknown that's disney disney tends to do that with their music it gets mm-hmm. it gets played into oblivion i mean hasn't everyone heard let it go like a gazillion times that's like a decade ago yeah, it's all about but still it's all about we don't talk about bruno or yeah, surface I know, pressure i know i know we don't talk about bruno as the big one now what happened who hurt them okay <laughs> who's uh, named bruno uh, we should do a conspiracy theory about this <laughs> what what happened to bruno what happened to bruno did uh, he screw you guys over do you think he did well, that's one conspiracy theory. Like, um, they're saying that Bruno from Encanto is actually the character from Luca, who's the father that abandoned. Um, I forgot that little boy's name. Oh, Alberto. Um, basically, he, he's like all alone because his father said, "I'll be back for you," and he never came back. That's very sad. But I thought that movie they're going to make it into a gay character. That's why he didn't want Luca to leave him so badly. But no, he has separation anxiety. It's very sad. Yeah, it, dude, Pixar is like banging with like real sad stories. Well, that's what that's Pixar's bread and butter is mm-hmm. the emotional manipulation. Yeah, but basically, he got adopted by a different family. Mm-hmm. Again, mm-hmm. this has very little to do with sorry uh, because Legend of like Vox Machina, but well, Vox Machina. If you made your stories a little bit more interesting, maybe I might talk <laughs> about you. <laughs> well, we 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 covered a pretty good amount of it there. So that's true. I want to talk before we go. Uh, well, actually, uh, what. 
other than the Percy storyline, mm-hmm. what do you think? Uh, what what other storylines do you think they need to pull? Do you think Keyleth? They need Keyleth? Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, uh, more of Keyleth, and I think I would like to see if Pike is going to be a bigger character mm-hmm. in the end. I want a storyline and like Grog. Just, yeah, I want a side storyline of Grog. Yeah, why he's so ultra violent and why he can't die and why he needs alcohol all the time. Mm-hmm. It's very sad and, and threatens to to, to to ruin everything when, yeah. when when he doesn't get his alcohol. Exactly. He's going through the DTs, I think. What's I mean, DT stand for? He's he's, go, he's he's going through withdrawal is what they're saying. Thank you. Yes. Thanks for watching this clip, guys. If you want to see full episodes or follow us on social media, links are in the description below. Bye. Bye.